It's not often that Photoshop gets a new tool, let alone a completely different way to think about selections. Well, we have that now with our brand new Selection Brush Tool. Hey there and welcome to Flurn. My name is Aaron Nace and today we're gonna to show you how to use the brand new Selection Brush Tool. Little hint, it is amazing with generative fill. Let's go ahead and jump into Photoshop. So we're gonna go ahead and take a look at our brand new tool. It's right here, the Selection Brush Tool. You can see it's nested with the Lasso Tools. The keyboard shortcut is gonna be L for the Selection Brush Tool. And if you hold Shift and press L, it cycles through those different tools. The same is true with any other tool set that is compacted, right? Like if you go to, for instance, your magic wand tool, if you wanna to get to the other tools within here, you can hold Shift W to cycle through those, okay? So Shift L will allow you to cycle through your lasso tools and get to your selection brush tool. There we go. Now with your selection brush tool, you have two options up at the very top. You have add and subtract. So by default, it's gonna be on add. Now, you can use your open and close brackets on your keyboard to make your brush larger or smaller, okay? You can click here and choose your opacity. By default, I recommend going all the way up to 100%, which is gonna be 100% selected. And then, of course, you can choose your brush size. Open and close brackets will do that as well, and your hardness. So let's go ahead and bring the hardness all the way up, which is just gonna make hard edge on the edge of your selection, okay? Now, when I start painting over my image, this area now becomes selected. Literally, wherever I paint becomes a selection. And you don't see the little marching ants like we did traditionally in Photoshop. Now we have this new overlay. You can change the overlay color by going to your options here and choosing the different color. By default, it's gonna be on magenta. Okay, so you can simply paint here. Now, you can also click on subtract and then start to subtract away. If you don't wanna include some areas, that's totally okay. You can click back on add and continue to add areas. And also you can hold alt or option, which will switch between subtract and add. So you can see it's gonna switch between those when I hold alt or option. So alt or option is gonna allow me to subtract, let go, and I can go back and add. So keep in mind, this is a selection. It's a brand new way of seeing selections in Photoshop. So for instance, if I'm on my background layer and I went to something like filter and I went to blur, let's go to Gaussian blur. There we go. Now, if I apply a Gaussian blur, it literally just applies it to where I painted. And now here you can actually see the marching ants on the edge of my selection. Okay, just to kind of like give you an example of what it's doing. Yes, it's making a selection and then you edit that part of your image. All right, let's go ahead and click on cancel. And then you deselect by hitting control or command D or clicking on deselect. Now, in this case, in my opinion, this tool works really, really well with generative fill. So let's go ahead and zoom out. And I wanna just, my subject is kind of standing on some rocks. It's really cool, but I wanna add some rocks up to the top. So let's just go ahead. I'm gonna use my open and close brackets. We're gonna make a nice big selection. There we go. And then with that selection, that's so easy to do. Let's click on generative fill and I'm just gonna type in rocks. There we go, it says rocks and let's click on generate. And here we can see this is generating. So now this works actually really similar to how Lightroom handles its generative fill where you paint over the area first and then simply do your gen fill. And that looks great. Look at that, amazing. So because I had my selection active already, what it did is it loaded that into a layer mask and then it filled that with rocks. So you can see I can turn this off and on and there we go. Make the selection first and then use generative fill. In our next example, we're gonna remove objects using the same process. So in this photo, we just have like this little chain that's kind of coming right in front of our subject. So again, let's grab that selection brush tool. I'm gonna to use my open and close brackets, just make it a little bit smaller. You just wanna make sure you paint right over the area you want to remove. It's okay if you do a little bit larger. There we go, perfect. And then we're gonna click on generative fill. I don't have to type in anything if I wanna remove. Let's go ahead and click on generate. And as you can see, this is generating. I think this is just a brilliant addition to Photoshop. We're getting used to using more painting tools and painting in an area that you want a generative fill, I think actually makes a little bit more sense than using traditional selection tools like the marquee tool, like our traditional lasso tools. Okay, now let's continue to paint in here. Uh, there we go. Don't forget L is the keyboard shortcut. You can go back to your tool here, your selection brush tool. And we're just gonna kind of paint in anything else that I see as a little bit distracting. There we go, just kind of keep on painting. Don't forget, hold Alt or Option. Like if I paint over my subject, I did that on purpose. If I paint over my subject, you can hold Alt or Option and just simply 
paint that out, okay? <laughs> I just wanted to show you how to do it. But you get the idea, right? Basically, you're painting, and then wherever you paint, makes a selection. And yes, like we showed you with the blur tool earlier, uh, the Gaussian blur, you can most definitely, let's click on generative fill and generate, and it's going to remove all this. Like we showed you with Gaussian blur earlier, you can most definitely use this for any type of selection technique that you have. But in my opinion, it just works the best with generative fill. There we go. And all that stuff is completely gone. Let's just go ahead and turn these layers off and back on so you can see our subject now looks great and our image is free of distraction. So the last thing I want to note is that when you're using the selection brush tool, your selections will always show up with an overlay. Other tools will show up more traditionally. Let's go ahead and show you how it works. So again, if I go to my selection brush tool, okay, there we go, and start painting. Yes, you can see the overlay is this pink color. Let's deselect. Now, here's the other cool thing. If I have this selected, check this out, and I go to select subject, it's also going to have this pink overlay. But if I go to a different selection tool, my selection is going to change and look more like a traditional selection. It's still the exact same selection. It's just changing how it looks in Photoshop. Let's go back to our selection brush tool again, and you can see this looks good. Now, this is actually, I think, a great change because, for instance, like I can deselect. You could even make a selection here with a rectangular marquee. Boom, look at that. And then go to your selection brush tool. You have this now. And then, for instance, I could add to my selection from the, from the marquee. I could click right back on here, and you can see that it has, in fact, added to that selection. All right, let's deselect one more time. We're going to go to our, let's just be on our marquee tool. Let's go to select subject. You can see this is the traditional selection out outline. As soon as I click on my selection brush tool, we have our new overlay. And then I can simply go in here, like where it didn't do a perfect job. Don't forget, you can still use your add and subtract because this is now a selection. So I can then go in here and kind of fix this up a little bit if I need to, for instance, you know, I've selected my subject, but I need to go and refine this edge manually simply by painting. Look how easy this is now. I can simply paint this area where it's going to get selected and I'm refining. Don't forget, you can hold Alt or Option to go to the minus. There we go. And I'm literally just refining my selection of my subject in real time using this brand new technique. All right, Alt or Option. I can go ahead and refine that a little bit more. And that looks fantastic. So no matter what selection tool you start with, as long as you're using the brand new selection brush tool, your overlay will be just like this. Of course, don't forget, you can change the color of your overlay if you want to. It's going to be on magenta by default. So just a little heads up on how it's going to display. And you can start with any of your selection tools in Photoshop. You can start with a regular lasso tool and then update it with a selection brush tool. So not only is it great for creating initial selections, but it's also fantastic for editing and refining those selections as well. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Give us a big thumbs up if you enjoyed this brand new tool in Photoshop. In a comment down below, let me know what you'd like to learn next. And if you wanna get more free tutorials, click on that subscribe button. Thanks again, and I'll learn you later. Bye everyone.